So we'll talk today about the bio, biological treatment of the teeth. And it will be a story about the treatment of the deep caries, reversible and irreversible uh, pulpitis. But we'll not talk about the root canal treatment because uh, in many cases, and it was surprising some times ago, it was when I re realized that it was really surprising for me that uh, we do not uh, we do not have to uh, treat all the teeth with the with the pulp inflammation with the pulpitis. We do not have to all all of them to 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 do the endodontic uh, treatment. And this is this is the true story. There was there was the the uh, story the animated story and this is this is the true story of my patients. And I think that it's the very common story because of uh, a lot of a lot of patients are coming to us to our office offices and they are saying, "Oh, doctor, I have I have a I have a pain in my tooth and this was and this was the story of this patient he came to my office and said oh doctor I feel the pain from uh, two weeks or even more but I cannot stand it no I, I cannot stand it but after two weeks maybe when uh, if uh, if he uh, if he took appointment two weeks ago it will it could be a little better but now, as you see, it seems a little, little bit horrible. But of course, when we see something like that, uh, in most cases, or maybe, maybe in every cases, I'm doing uh, the X-ray, and this is this is the result of of my X-ray. And as you see here, you can see, and I think that a year ago or two years ago. When I will, uh, when I when I saw something like this, the caries, the, as you see, the lesion is very deep. The caries is deep. Normally, I'm saying to my to my uh, assistant, Monica, please uh, please prepare the set for the odontic treatment. Please prepare the uh, the microscope. But it was one year ago, and now I'm thinking a little bit different. And why I'm thinking a little bit different? You have to remember that, that the, uh, even if you are a specialist in endodontic treatment, I am a specialist in, in endodontic treatment. I'm using the microscope uh, for the treatment from uh, 15 years, so a lot of time. I've, get, I've got the experience. I'm doing the lectures about the, about the endodontic treatment, but I still prefer to avoid it, to, to avoid if I can. Why? Because we have to remember that uh, even if, if you will do the perfect, absolutely perfect endodontic treatment there is still risk that there will be something wrong and uh, something will go will will go uh, not uh, the way you are thinking or, or you you want it to to go and uh, another another thing that if you will if uh, the tooth is in vital it's not so uh, the tooth it's not so tough so the, this tooth cannot stand uh, the forces as big as uh, as a vital tooth. If we look, if we look a little bit closer uh, for our for this for this tooth, for this tooth, this six the molar, we can see that the uh, root canals are curved here. This is this is not the big the the the, the very big curvature, but it is. But if we look for the palatal root. Look for this here on the end. So it could be we could have some problems to do the proper proper endodontic treatment in in this case. Uh, on many of my uh, of my lectures, endodontic le lectures, I'm showing this uh, this form. This form was created by the American Association of uh, Endodontics. And uh, this is the case difficulty assessment form, and I'm always showing it on my on my lectures because uh, I think that not all of us are uh, are thinking how difficult could be could be endodontic treatment, and there is a lot really, as you see, a lot of things that can uh, uh, 
affect the difficulty of our treatment. For example, medical history, uh, possibility of anesthesia, or if the if if the tooth was uh, was uh, treated first time, or or if it's retreatment or something like that. If there is uh, what is the morphology? You saw this this slide before. The morphology of uh, of that molar is not so easy. Of course, we can we can treat it. We can do the endodontic the treatment, and possibly it everything will be good. But still, it will be in vital tools. It it will not be the the vital one. So I will not talk much about. Uh, I, I will talk not. I will talk not more about the about the endodontics. Uh, I want to you to show this. Uh, this uh, slice of the of the tools. Uh, with here, if you look here, we've got the uh, we've got the caries, but this is the medium caries, uh, so it's quite far from from the pulp. It's safe. And my question is, in this case, if in the case of the medium caries, are you using aligners for the composite filling or not? I'm not. I'm not using from from years. Why? Because the, as I remember now, I'm not. I'm always. I'm almost not using the aligners. But uh, I remember from from uh, past years that a lot of liners that that the producers are are preparing for us. Uh, they got the resin inside. Not all of them, of course, but a lot of them. They got the resin. So uh, if you are putting the resin. Uh, as a liner, just to uh, to protect the pulp from the resin from the from the composite material, it's something illogical for me. So I'm not using in the medium carriers. I know that the that the pulp can stand this uh, this chemical chemical uh, problems that uh, that the monomers could could do for the for the pulp. So in the case of the medium carriers, I'm not thinking about any liner because I don't need, I, I do not have to. But uh, what in the case of the deep carriers? This is this is a different situation. This is a different situation because from the from years uh, when I had the deep, really deep carriers, I was trying to clean it as as possible to clean all the all the edges of my of my of my preparation to clean it and uh, i was leaving a little bit of caries i was leaving the uh not hard enough uh, denting but this denting was some kind of uh, the, so when 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 i was using the probe to check the to to, to check the denting so on the on the wall of the tooth, on the wall of the cavity that was that was neighboring with the with the pulp, uh, I was leaving the the carious uh, the the carious then infected dentin, but this dentin was wasn't really really soft, but it was possible. I was I was able to uh, scratch it with the uh, with the probe, and I was leaving and I was using the uh, glassinomer cements. And they worked very, very well, very well. Here you can see uh, this is this is the the um, glassinomer cement after after the half year. We can see some cracks here, but it still works. There is still no leakage, so it's it's quite good. And it was working for me years, but I was able to put the glassinomer cement only. If I if I had if uh, I have no signs of the of the pulpitis irreversible pulpitis it was the it was the first and the main point and the second I was able to put it uh, I wasn't able to put the glassinomer cement uh, for the for the exposed uh, uh, pulp so uh, there was a lot of still there are a lot of indication for glassinomer cement but it's not good it's it's not the perfect material for for all uh, of the cases and uh, 
In such case, this is quite similar like, like the first one. If you look for this, there is the big carriers. Uh, there are the signs, there are the, the, the signs of the uh, of the pulpitis, but the but the pain is from one or two days, and, and the patient is feels the pain when he is eating or drinking something or, or drinking something. And in this case, should we perform root canal treatment or maybe, or maybe we can do the conservative treat treatment? This is the question. And when I normally when I see such uh, such X-ray, uh, I'm um, I'm explaining to my to, to the patients that I don't know if will if I will have to do the, the full endodontic treatment or not. But from some time, we've got some things that we can do because uh, we've got some materials that I'm really, really happy that, uh, that I started to, to use it because we've got the biodentin. It's the bioactive cement based on the tricalcium, uh, tricalcium silica. And I have to say that uh, biodentin has a uh, a lot, a lot of advantages, and I will try to show to show them to you now. So, but we'll we'll start from the indication. And uh, for the first, I want to uh, on the beginning, I want to say that uh, I'm not treating the children. I don't like to treat the children, so I will talk about the cases for the for the adults uh, normally because. Uh, if I do not have to treat the, the, the children, I'm not doing them. So I will talk about the main uh, indication mainly for the uh, for the uh, not for the primary teeth. So the first indication for the biodentin uh, is the medium is is the medium caries like here. So here we've got the medium, maybe quite big, but still medium caries is quite far from the from the pulp and uh just few minutes few minutes before uh, i was talking about that i'm not using liners yes and and still i'm not using them but in some cases it's especially it's not if it's uh if it's the medium caries and it's quite far from uh if it's the medium caries and uh, i'm quite quite far from uh from the pulp uh, I'm choosing still. I'm choosing the biodentin, but this biodentin works as a as a bulk material. I think that you that you heard about this. This is the this is the layer of the biodentin. I think that you that you already heard uh, about the method of the filling to, to fill the posterior teeth called bulk and body. And in in the original bulk and body, in the original, you can say bulk and body method, uh, we can we are filling the I can say the dentin part. We are filling with the bulk composite bulk fill composite materials, but it's still the composite. So, uh, but we can we we are filling this this part like here with the bulk bulk composite in white one one portion. And then the last two millimeters, we are filling with the normal standard composite. But we can, but still, we've got the resin, a lot of resin here. We've got the, a lot of monomers here. And we, if we want to treat more biological, uh, we can change the bulk fill composite material to the to the biodentin, to the bioactive cement. So we are putting the bioactive cements to the, so we are filling the, the part, the denting part, and then just the last two millimeters we are filling with the normal composite. I will switch now to my, uh, to my camera. I will, I will switch to my camera and uh, you will see, you will see because I prepared, this is the, this is the biodentin, and here I've got the uh, the model and the teeth, and 
this is already already uh, this is the bioidentity that is already set and this is exactly what I'm doing how I'm feeling uh, with the with the bioidentity uh, in a case uh, in the case of the of the bulk fill uh, bulk and body uh, bulk and body method so I'm taking the probe I can take the probe with like uh, with with the uh, with the signs of uh, with the measurement, or I can take like here. I can I can have the probe with the with the endodontic stopper, and I'm checking and I'm checking the height of the uh, of the dentin of the dentin layer, and I can feel that the rest with the composite, and I can do the the composite like here. You can see on the on the neighbor tooth. We've got the this is this is the tooth that is filled with the uh, bulk and bulk and body uh, method. So this is it. So I will switch on again for my presentation. And we are going back to the indication. So as I already already said, the one of the indication is the bulk and body method to fill the uh, to fill the cavity in medium caries. Another, in the much deeper, in the deep caries, uh, we can fill it with the with the biodentin, even in the full one, and it will be it will be uh, indirect pulp capping method. So this is not so we can use it in when we've got, for example, reversible or even irreversible pulpitis. Another indication, if we get exposed pulp, we can use the biodentin as a long, uh, long temporary filling material. We can keep it even without the composite here. We can keep it for the for the max uh, six months, and uh, we can heal at the time we can heal the uh, the pulp. But we can use the pulp in in vital tooth. So, for example, when we when we when we finish the root canal treatment, we can fill all the chamber and the most of the dentin. So we are replacing uh, the dentin with the with the biodentin. So the so the septodont is calling uh, the biodentin named uh, the substitute substitute of of the dentin. And I have to say that I agree with uh, with that, and in uh, other cases, in other cases, so for example, if we got the uh, perforation like here on this, we can use and we can fill it with the biodentin. If we've got uh, very wide uh, canals and uh, opened physiological foramen, this is this is too wide. We can use. Uh, biodentin here in this case too. So it's so as you see, uh, this is this is really universal. Uh, this is this is really universal material. Okay, let's go further with our presentation indication. And so uh, I think that. Most of you know, already know that, and if not, uh, if if you not not noted, noticed that uh, before, the biodentin is, I can say that uh, very similar to MTA, and uh, I think that most of you uh, knows MTA very well. But uh, I'm saying that biodentin is some kind of uh, improved uh, MTA. The main ingredients it's uh, in both of these. Uh, of this bioactive cements, it's uh, tricalcium silicate, but in biodentin there is much more. And uh, why I think that biodentin is better in most cases than MTA, because of many, many reasons. The first reason is that biodentin is uh, much easier in handling, so it's the um, the, the consistency of the, of the material is much uh, it's much easier to to work with uh, with the biodentin. Another point is that uh, the 
solubility of the biodentin is less than uh, is, is lower than uh, solub solubility of of the MTA. And why it's, why it's like this? Because uh, in uh, to to mix and to prepare biodentin, we are using just for the one portion we are using just five drops of the of the water and nothing else just five not, not the water the special liquid there is uh, which is which is in the sets with biodentin and we are just putting five drops so uh, in the whole the mixture there is there is very uh, there is very small amount of water so the solubility of the biodentin is less and uh, and in fact of this, uh, the biodentin is uh, has has a very good uh, has a very good uh, compressive strength. So so the so the strength for the for the compressing is is really is really big. So after uh, one hour, then one hour we've got uh, 100 megapascals of the compressing of compressing strength. After 24 hours, we've got 200. And uh, after one month, because we have to be, you have to know that the full uh, crystallization, because we are not talking about the polymerization of the biodentin, we are talking about the crystal crystallization. The crystal after the, the one month, the crystallization is um, is stopped because it's it's full, and uh, and the compressive strength of the biodentin is. Uh, about 300 megapascals and it's 300 it's the same like a natural dentin because the natural dentin compressive strength it's uh, 290 and 295 something like that so it's it's really substitute of the of the dentin mta is not so uh, it's not so tough and others that we know that from uh, from our practice and we know that from from the clinical trials uh, that uh, in case of using the biodentin, uh, the risk of the discoloration of the tools is much uh, lower than the risk if you are using MTA. And uh, this is, I think, that it could be important. Uh, it, it, no, it, it not could be. It is important for, for our patient and for us too. So the biodentin is, is really uh this this we've, we've got advantages according to to mta and another uh another advantage is is that is the setting time and this is this is really important for us as a dentist as the practitioner because the biodentin is starting to set after the six minutes after mixing so you've got the six minutes to manipulate so after the six minutes, the crystallization is starting. So it's it's starting to harden. And uh, after after uh, ten to twelve minutes, uh, it's hard enough, and we can go and we can go further. And the working time and the first setting time of the MTA is 70, 70 minutes, and we can say that MTA is set after 170 minutes, 170, even five, I remember, 175 minutes. This is the time when, when we can go further and make another, another, another step. So uh, the time is really, in case of biodentin, is, is much slower, uh, lower. The, so this, is, this, is, this has a very practical uh this is very practical for us and uh, there is the one thing that uh, in uh, in which the mta is is better uh it's the biodentin is less visible in the in the x-ray but it's uh, if we know that there is a biodentin you will see some x-ray after after the putting of the biodentin so you you will see that you will be able to see them but uh, the contrast uh, in the in the X-rays of biodentin is uh, lower than from the for for the MTA. So for the diagnostic reasons, MTA is a little better. But it's what it's important. Biodentin it's cheaper. It's cheaper. So this is this is another 
I think the big advantage advantage for for us with with the biodent. And so you will see some uh, some of my, of my cases, some of the cases when you can uh, when when uh, you can use the the biodentin. For example, this patient came to my office. Uh, so I, there was here. Uh, it was the really huge, huge the composite filling, and uh, there was the big leakage in this filling. So there was there was the secondary caries here, and this and this caries was very very close to the pulp. So it was really perfect. Uh, uh, it was a really perfect indication, a perfect case for for the biodentin because the patient has no signs of the of the pulpitis. And uh, there was no problem of the uh, of the occlusion or, or uh, with the with the bio because all the occlusal forces are working here, not here. So the perfect situation you can live. Uh, we can live for the uh, for the six months this bio without any problem. Another case, it was uh, one of my first cases with uh, with the bio dentins. It was sometimes it was I think that more than two years, maybe about the two years ago, these patients came to me in this condition, as like you see, here we've got the big, very big perforation. And uh, the story behind this was uh, that uh, this patient came to, to, to her and uh, to her general dentist and, uh, and there was the inflammation and the dentist uh, started to start to look for the for the root canals and uh, there was a there was a big enamel stone here uh, in the coronal part and the dentist was was looking for the canals and and cannot find them and did something like that when i saw that i said to, to my patients that i'm sorry but it's too big and uh, the perforation is too big and there is no chance for this disease but these patients start to beg me doctor please try it will be for my it will be my responsibility so please try to do something so i would i decided to uh to treat it with bioactive cement so i put it i filled it with the bioactive cement here and it still works i've, I've still got the contact with this uh, this patient and it still works so it was the perfect uh, the perfect case for the for the biodentin and another case, quite similar, but a little bit different. This was uh, the patient came to my office. Uh, she came to me after the after the endodontic treatment. Uh, the root canals were were already filled and were filled with uh, without any voids, and it was, in my opinion, it was it was made uh, with a with a good. Uh, it was it was a good endodontic treatment, but the patient still feels something, some some pain, and she was uh, asking her dentist and and said, "Oh, I feel some pain. No, it's impossible. Everything is okay. I feel some pain. No, it's impossible. Everything is okay." So she came to my office and I saw and I opened this tooth and I saw this big perforation, and it was it was some time ago and it still works. It's another perfect uh, case for the for the biodentin. And this case, you know, because it's uh, it's the case from the beginning. We got the big caries. Uh, you will see how how I did that. It still works. You know these patients. So first I'm putting I'm always when I'm uh, when I'm working with the deep caries, I'm always using the, the rubber dump. This is very important. If you want to, to treat uh, pulpitis, if we want to treat uh, uh, and we, to have the good results with the, uh, with the treatment of the, of the deep cavities, uh, we have to use, to use rubber dam. I know that a lot of dentists are not using, but I'm always convincing them to start to, start to, do, to do it. That. So, I put it so we got the rubber dam. I started to to clean, and what it's important when we are when when we are cleaning cleaning the tooth, you have to clean as much dentin as you can. But in this case, 
here I hope that you can that you are able to see the dentin here. This dentin is darker, but I but I checked it with the probe here and here and here, and there was no scratches with the probe. So it was hard enough to leave that. But I left the soft dentin here. We can see here we are almost we are almost in the pulp. So in this, this case. We can just put the biodentin for the hole, wait 12 minutes to, to finish the crystallization of the biodentin and remove and remove the uh, and and uh, remove wedges and everything and we've got and we've got the, the end. Uh, as I said before, we can wait, we can after. 12 minutes, we can remove the layer of this. I will talk it about it later about the biodentin and put and put uh, the layer, the two millimeters layer of the of the composite. But normally, uh, I prefer to wait uh, some days. Uh, I prefer to wait and then when the when the biodentin will be really hard, I'm removing the, this layer. And then I'm putting the, the composite material. And in this case, I decided to, to do the full, uh, the, of course, the temporary, but the full filling with the biodentin. And what is the what is the common problem? I'm always trying to avoid that, but we have almost no the contact point here. Here we've got some contact point, but not here. So now uh, this is this is quite old case. But now I'm doing a little bit different. If I'm, if I can, uh, I will erase this. If I can, I prefer. If I can, I prefer first to close this wall to reveal to this wall with the composite. So I prefer to do to to make a box or the first glass cavity, and then to fill with the uh, with the biodentin. In my opinion, it's uh, it's much it's it's much better to do to do that way. But uh, I mentioned before about the irreversible disease, and uh, a few months ago I saw this this trial. I saw this trial made in uh, three years ago, so it's it's not so uh, it's it's not so new because it's it's three years, but it was quite new for me, and I I saw that, and it was it was some for me like a bang in my head, because I saw that it it was it was really uh, how how to say it I was really surprised that it's possible and. Uh, when I saw this uh, this trial, I said, that, "Oh yes, this is something perfect. I have to I have to try it." And from this time, I'm I'm using I'm trying to do that. Uh, as you see, we've got the 22 year old man with uh, diagnosis of of irreversible polypitis, and we've got the D. It's the 26 months follow up, and this tooth is still vital. So it was really for me. It was something, something really, really big, and uh, I started to think about that. And I was, I was really, I was really uh, happy that uh, I can try that, and I do not have to treat uh, a lot of um, a lot of these endodontically, endodontically, even if if we've got the irreversible uh, pulpitis. But you have to be aware. And this is this is really really important that the, when you want to treat with the biodentin with the bioactive cements, if you want to treat the the teeth, if you want to try, first you have to explain really explain deeply everything to your patients. Why? Because uh, patients are coming to your office. Most of them are, are afraid, like these patients from the from the animated movie on the on the beginning. And uh, most of of this uh, most of these uh, patients are afraid of the pain 
and they are afraid of the dentist and so are waiting so long to come to, to, our, to our dental offices. And uh, they are coming to us and they want to go back to their homes uh, without any pain. So they think that, they, that when they will leave our office, they will feel no pain. But in the case of the irreversible palpitis, we have to aware our, our patient that uh, there is the risk that they will feel the pain. And normally, from my, it is from my uh, experience, the patients still feel quite, quite high pain, quite big pain for two, for two or three days. And then the pain is, is going to be, to be lower and lower. So you have to be aware and you have to remember that you have to explain everything uh, to your patient and you have to ask them and you have to be sure that they know what you are that, uh, what you are talking about. Uh, what is good for us and what working for us then in case if you are doing the proper procedure if you if you are doing the procedure and uh, about the procedure I will talk a little bit later on the next slides and uh, if you are following the, the full procedure uh, we've got the 90% chance of the success. So nine per, per 10 cases will be successful. So it's, it's really big. So imagine that uh, to our office, there are coming the patient with the irreversible pulpitis. And uh, normally in the classic dentistry, we are taking the set of the endodont for the endodontic treatment and we are doing the endodontic treatment and the patient has a non-vital tooth. It still has, but it's, but it's non-vital and it's not 100% uh, per, uh, uh, good tooth if, if, it's not, uh, if it's not vital. So you can see that, uh, I hope that, that uh, you will have opportunity to try that if we will use the biodentin, and if we will follow the procedure, we have the 90% uh, chance of the of the success. So this is this is very very big big chance I can say. So here you will see the biodentin step by step uh, in uh, in irreversible pulpitis how we are doing. So we've got the patient, we've, uh, we've, we made interview, of course, this is important to make, um, to make um, RFOG and to make x-ray and to check how, the, how this tooth looks like. Uh, this is important to, to check if there is any reaction of the, of the pulp because if there is no reaction and nothing, and nothing happens, maybe, maybe there is uh, necrosis of the pulp, so we have to differentiate that, but we'll see it after June. So first, we are doing anesthesia. Uh, it will be the best if uh, we will do the anesthesia with articaine. We are doing anesthesia, we are putting the rubber down, and uh, then we are doing the preparation, and uh, we are exposing the pulp, and you, if you will, when you will see the, the, uh, the blood, this means if you will see the blood here in exposed in exposed dentin, uh, you will know that it's not uh, you 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 can be sure that it's not the necrosis on the pulp and this 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 really could be pulpitis. I can say that it will be pulpitis. And you are we are doing the disinfection, few minutes of disinfection with the uh, with the hypochlorite or chlorhexidine. I prefer hypochlorite because uh, the hypochlorite, in my opinion, it stops bleeding faster than uh, than chlor chlorhexidine. And we are waiting five minutes, and we are looking we are looking for the clock. And if you are if uh, we if we got the hemostasis during the five minutes and there is no bleeding. 
from the pulp, we can go farther. If if in the case where there, there is the, the bleeding, we are doing the partial pulpotomy. So we can we are removing with the clean burrs and uh, in and uh, with the with the water one in the head uh, switch on in the uh, in the headpiece and we are removing the part of the pulp we are disinfecting in it with the, with the with the hypochlorite again we are waiting five minutes and if there is the hemostasis we can do, go farther if not we are going deeper we can remove the whole pulp from the from the pulp chamber and if we we reach in this level in the last this is the last level before the endodontic treatment if we reach the hemostasis we can go farther so we are filling we are filling the cavity with the biodentin if it's possible if you've got time and possibility it's good as i said before to first to rebuild this this wall with the composite material because it will be uh, it will be it will be it will stand more forces much more forces and then we are going if everything is okay we are waiting two weeks at least two weeks why we have to work two weeks because after as I said before, the crystallization is still going. The material seems to be hard after, uh, or quite hard after uh, 12 minutes when we can start to do something. But it seems quite hard, but it's still, the crystallization is still going. So it's, if you can wait, if, if you can wait two weeks, at least two weeks, it, it is good to wait. And we are removing, uh, we are removing the, the part, the two millimeters of the biodentin after the full, after the after the two weeks, and we are doing the full bonding procedure. And there is the question: how this bonding procedure should uh, looks like? Uh, and it's not so easy to say because uh, I, uh, I read a lot of trials about, uh, about the bonding to, to the biodentin, uh, but I'm doing like that. So I'm waiting two weeks, I'm etching biodentin, both biodentin like, like enamel, and I'm using normally, because on, on my every practice, I'm using the, the newest universal uh, bonding system. So, these are the self-edge uh, system, the universal ones, so the, the, the last generation, I can say. Uh, but I prefer, I prefer to, um, I prefer to use the to edge with the phosphoric acids, uh, even uh, even even if I'm using the universal self-edging uh, bonding system. Uh, I found some uh, some nice trials, but it was uh, they are made in vitro, not in vivo. So so we are not 100% sure that it that it will be the same in the mouse. And it was about the shear bond strange uh, to the biodentin. And uh, from these trials, there was there was the uh, conclusion that uh, it's better if you are using the etchant or the universal system it's better to etch for the longer time. Uh, so if you are using the etchant, it's, uh, it's good to etch biodentin more than half minute. So in these trials, there was, uh, there was um, six, as I remember, it was not six, three minutes. So yes, it was, no, no, it was uh, 240 and, and 40 minutes. Uh, no, minutes, seconds, minutes, so I'm talking, sorry, two minutes and 40 seconds, oh, yes, so it was easy. Uh, uh, so we have to, if we'll, if we'll wait a little more with, uh, with the phosphoric acid, we will have the better, the better adhesion to, to the, we will have the better uh, adhesion to the uh, biodentin. And after that, the last part, 
Uh, so on the last two millimeters, we are putting the layer of the composites that you are that you are working uh, on every day. But it's not the end of the treatment because we have to make appointments to check if everything is okay, to make an X-ray, to check the the response uh, the response of the pulp for the for the temperature, for example. So normally I'm uh, I'm making appointment after the three months and then after half year and if everything is okay I'm doing uh, I'm doing the uh, the next appointment to check after one year and this, this is this is the biodentin step by step procedure in in irreversible uh, pulpitis uh, to summarize that. The, one of the most important things that you have to you have to absolutely you have to remember in this procedure to follow this and to have uh, more than uh, than uh, ninety percent of the of the success rate is this. You have to reach during maximum five minutes. You have to reach the hemostasis. If you are not able to reach the hemostasis during the five minutes. Remember, of course, about the disinfection. If you are not able to reach it, you have to you have to try to to make the partial pulpotomy or full pulpotomy. But it's if it still if it still doesn't work, you have to to do the standard endodontic treatment and the root canal treatment. This is this is I think the main thing, the the most important things that you have to to remember. And this will be almost uh, at the end. It will be a clinical case uh, that I really like because this is this is the deep deep curious, and this is the same situation like the first, uh, or like, like on the first. Uh, this patient is the 33 year old uh, woman. She was waiting more than one month to came to my office because she was afraid and uh, she is a businesswoman and she said that I was first I was afraid of the treatment and the second I have no time for the treatment and uh, after more more than half uh, more than one uh, month uh, more than one month of the pain she decided oh I can stay stand it anymore so I have to go to, to the office and, and she came to me and of course I made an x-ray and I saw something like that. And I said, oh, we've got the problem. Why we've got the problem? Look for the level when we've got the caries. It's quite high. Even if, if, even if, I'm, if uh, I will be able to, uh, to treat that tooth, and even if I will be successful with the uh, with the biologic treatment of, of these tooth, I will I'll still will have the problem. I still will have the problem to rebuild this tooth with the prosthetic because of the biological weeds. We are very close. We are really here. We are very close to the um, to the to the bone. Uh, so. Here, I think that it's less than one millimeter to the bone, so it's not enough. But the patients, I was, uh, uh, I was, uh, I was talking. To, I, it took me quite long time to to explain everything to her, uh, and she said, "Doctor, if it's if it if there is any possibility that uh, you will not have to 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 do the root canal treatment in these tools." I want to try, and I said, okay, but it's. I will not say if if it will work or or, or not, and I was really surprised because it was half year ago, I think, and this is this is the view of these tools, and it still works. As you see, it looks quite good here, and it still works. I'm waiting. I'm waiting. I'm still waiting, and after half year. Uh, We'll have to decide what to do with that uh, with that tooth. But I think that maybe maybe if the patient will not decide for the prosthetic treatment of this uh, of this tooth for the crown, maybe I will rebuild the the composite. But just here, 
I will not go deep. Uh, I will not go as deeply here. Uh, I will just fill this this part with the composite. I don't know. I'm I'm not sure. We'll see. Maybe maybe when when we'll see on the other lecture or, or webinar, uh, I will have the further information about uh, about this this story about this this patient. Thank you very much for the for this part for the webinar. So I'm waiting. Uh, very soon we'll start the question and answers. Here you can see my email address. It's Michal Ganovic, uh, gmail.com. And you can, if you have any questions about uh, about the biodentin or other uh, or other dental questions, uh, please feel free to write write to me. And now we'll have I will switch off my presentation and we'll have the question and, and answer session. So thank you very much, Dr. Ganovitz. Thank you. So we are close from the end of uh, your lecture, but yes, some uh, some questions. Um, so uh, a question: Can we just fill the entire cavity with biodentin, eliminating usage of composite? Uh, we can do it, but only temporary because uh, we can do it just for the long. It, it, the, the biodentin could be the filling as a long time temporary. So uh, after after the uh, six months, uh, it could it could be it could shear too much. So uh, you will lose after the six months if if the the biodentin is uh, is on the occlusal side. Uh, you will lose the, the outer layer of the biodentin, so you have to replace it. Because if you will wait too too long time, there will be no leakage because this, there is no problem. But you can inside the cavity, you can uh, expose the expose the dentin, and if you expose the dentin, patient could feel some hypersensitivity. But it will be after after half year, I can say. Maybe I think that in the very small cavity, for example. Um, for example, on the uh, on the buccal side of the of the molars, where you've got the deep but very small cavity, I think that it it could be possible to to leave the biodentin. But normally, as I said, you can treat the biodentin as a long temporary filling material, and it's always better after the time after at least two weeks and it will be good if you will wait one month uh, just to put the level the, the, the layer of the composite on it. Thank you. Another one. Um, do you prescribe a patient with any meds, analgesic or antibiotics for those that you may anticipate post operative pain? Uh, sometimes just something for pain, but it's um, uh, but there are the paracetamol or or ibuprofen or something like that. So ibuprofen. So it's nothing. It's it, it's nothing big. Sometimes sometimes when the when the patient is uh, uh, suffers really. So I'm using some uh, some some uh, more powerful uh, more powerful pain uh, killers, but. Uh, I'm not. I'm not prescribing antibiotics. I am leaving biotic, bio, antibiotics for the end, because uh, because of the problem of the of the bacteria. And and um, my opinion is that that the dentist and and the, the human, the, the people on the world, we are using too much the antibiotics. So if it's possible to avoid it, I'm I'm avoiding it. And uh, I'm using. In the dentistry, I'm using the antibiotics only if the patient has the necrosis or or some uh, or some very 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 big inflammation uh, in the in the apex area. Not not if if there is the irreversible or reversible cutis. Thank you. Um, is biodentin applicable for primary teeth? Yes, of course. Yes, of course. I'm not doing that because I'm not. Uh, I don't like. I really don't like to to, to, to treat the children. Uh, but yes, it's 
in my opinion, it's it's a very good, in the opinion of my colleagues that are that are uh, doing a lot of treatment of the children. Uh, this is this is the perfect the perfect um, uh, perfect material for the for the children and, and for the, the primary tools. Thank you. Uh, if there is no hemostasis after partial pulpotomy, do you go for complete pulpotomy and wait another five minutes for hemostasis? Exactly. Exactly. We are doing the full pulpotomy and we are waiting five uh, another five minutes. If uh, if we'll gain the hemostasis, it's perfect. We are doing the biodenting. The problem is uh, the problem with the full pulpotomy is one that uh, will not be able to check uh, the vitality of the tooth with the with the temperature uh, because uh, there is the there is the very big chance that, that there will be no reaction for the uh, for the for the temperature for example and uh, the only the only possibility to check if uh, if you are successful or not is the uh, it's uh, interview with the patient. If there is no pain, there is a chance, but the, the chance. And we have to, if we are doing the full pulpotomy, uh, the only chance to be sure that uh, that we are successful is to do uh, the X-rays during even four years. So every half year, we should we we should do the uh, appointment, make X-ray check if there are any, any signs of uh, chronic inflammation in the apex area and every half year and after four years because uh, why four years because the four years we can say about the success of the donative treatment we can say after the four years when there is no signs of the chronic or any other inflammation so we, it's exactly the same when we when we are doing the full pulpotomy we have to check x-rays every half year and after four years we can say when there is no symptom, symptoms, the pain and no chronic symptoms, symptoms, uh, the inflammation, the symptoms in the, in the x-ray. And this is the only possibility to, to, to be sure that we are successful. Lots of questions around the hemostasis. So what method do you use to achieve hemostasis in pulpotomy? Uh, the easiest method is to use the um, to use the uh, hypochlorite as, I, as I'm using because it's um, it's uh, I don't know how to, to say it in English but it kills uh, it stops bleeding because it's it's made the layer of the uh, of the uh, of the blood I can say so it it closing. If I've got the problem, uh, there is um, there is one method that I'm that I'm used from years in the endodontics treatment and uh, in the canals, and it's it, I'm using the same with the hemostasis uh, in the pulp. Um, you can rinse the pulp uh, with the uh, with hot uh, saline saline solution. The normal root saline solution, you are I'm just taking I'm just uh, taking the syringe, filling with the with the saline solution, putting to the to the hot water for the for the some time, and I'm putting the hot I'm rinsing the the cavity with the hot saline uh, solution. But it's uh, but it it is extra and it's not uh, instead of the of the hypochlorite. For a premolar and anterior, sometimes the pulp floor can be difficult to estimate. How deep would you go for pulpotomy? Uh, I think that it's uh, uh, normally there is there is uh, there is the rule when you are opening the the root canals. There there is the rule of the seven millimeters, but it's normally in premolars. Uh, but it 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 could be it could be the same in the premolar with the with with the one root with the one canal for example the lower the lower premolar premolars and it's quite the same in the front teeth and the rule it's it's the seven millimeter rule so uh, if you are if you are opening the cavity and uh, you are going deep 
just to seven millimeters. If you will, if you will extend that, there is the big risk that you will do the the, the perforation. This is this is uh, very useful in the case of the enamel stones when you when you, even if you are working with the microscope, you are not you you have the problem to see the the um, root canals and um, the entrance to, to, to the root canals. So I think that it, the seven millimeter rule is the best. So if you are trying to do hemostasis on the, in the front of, on the, in the premolars, you are going deep, 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 deep. And if you are reaching seven millimeters, you have to think uh, maybe it's time, I, not maybe, I think that it's time to stop. If you are not reaching the hemostasis on the seven millimeters, uh, you have to think if it's if to go further or not. If patients don't have any complaint after six months, can we just assume that we are on the edge of success and we don't have to take X-ray? Uh, I'm always I'm always I always prefer to take an X-ray because the, uh, the amount of the of the X-ray is now in in the nowadays RVG is so small that it's not dangerous for our patients. And I always want to check, but after half months, you, we are not sure if you will, will able to see the, the, the changes in the apex area. Uh, but uh, after six months, you have to check, of course, if, if it's not the full pulpotomy, but if, even if it is, you can to try that. Uh, it's good to, to check the reaction for the, for the temperature, for the cold temperature. I think that this is this is this is the best. If the patient is, uh, if the reaction of the pulp is is good, so the patient feels something, but immediately after removing this, uh, immediately after removing the um, the cold uh, the cold cotton or or some or, or micrographs that you are using for that, uh, if the patient's if the, the 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 pain is is going out, it's good. I think so. We are sure that uh, that we are successful. Um, can we bond the Emax only on biodentin? Uh, good question. Uh, I, yes, we can. Yes, we can. Uh, we've got. You have to remember. Um, I've never seen. I don't know if, if there are any trials about the about the um, uh, connection about the, about the strange bonds uh, about the. Emax and, uh, and the biodentin, but we've got the trials. But you have to, we have to remember that we are not gluing directly Emax with the with the biodentin, but we are using the bonding system and some uh, cement. And com normally we are for the for the Emax we are using the, um, the composite cement, and then we are putting the Emax. So my answer is yes, you can. Um, does biodentin act just as a physical barrier? Uh, yes, yes. I don't know if, if we can say that the just physical barrier, but it is. We have to remember that the, I was um, I missed the information that um, biodentin is uh, really I can say bio is, is friendly for our cells and, 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 and for, for, uh, for the pulp. So uh, the biodentin has uh, anti-inflammatory uh, properties. So uh, because the pH is, uh, is very high and it's alkalic and it stops the, it, it's, uh, the biodentin stops the, uh, the inflammation, um, the inflammation response of our, of our body. And it's really safe for and and uh, it's biological safe for for our body. So so the biodentin is not uh, cytotoxic. Can we use biodentin to treat cracked tooth syndrome? Uh, if uh, in my opinion, yes, we can. Yes, we can. But of course. Uh, if you are doing that, just put the biodentin just in the as a, as a, uh, part of, of the of the dentin, uh, as a, and uh, 
try to you have to remember that uh, in any case when you are when you are treating the crack to sy symptom you have to be really be aware about the occlusion and, and about the occlusion of this this particular these these tools so you have to you have to check if there is if uh, there are any uh, uneven contacts uh, if uh, if uh, this tooth is not uh, loaded too much, because sometimes sometimes the, the teeth are are cracking because they are they are the first contacts in uh, in uh, maximal intercuspidation position. So you have to be really really aware about the about the occlusion uh, with the tooth and about the whole occlusion. But yes, you can use it. Thank you, and it will be the, the last question. How much would you charge uh, for a class two feeling restored with biodentin and a composite? Uh, for the tooth feeling, normally, uh, I will I will not talk about the about the prices because we are the, the prices in Poland, and I'm working in the dental office with the uh, high level of the equipment, and we are quite uh, expensive in the Polish level. I can I can say. Uh, but normally for the first visit, I'm taking um, I'm taking like uh, for the like a for um, for the filling, just normal composite filling. So normally I'm taking the first time. This is this the biodentin treatment. The patient is paying for the uh, exactly the same the same like for the normal filling, and after the time. He is paying uh, again the same price for the for the last feeling. Why I'm doing that? Because uh, because you, we have to remember that at the end, this the the price of the of the full treatment will will be just two feelings. And if we will decide if if I will be successful, it will be just two feelings. And if not, if if I will not decide to uh, to treat the tooth biologically, I have to do the endodontic treatment in many cases. And, and endodontic treatment is much more expensive, and um, and there is there is much bigger uh, risk of of some of some problems. So still, if I'm taking the two times for the for the filling, the patient is still paying uh, paying much less than if we will, we will have to do the endodontic treatment. But of course, I'm explaining it to, the, to, to my patients. I'm not saying, okay, you are paying this and this, and patient is coming to after, after six months, and I'm saying, okay, you have to pay another time, and patient is angry because, uh, because he already paid for that. No, I'm always uh, explaining why I'm taking this part, this part uh the uh the price for the for the first visit and uh, and the, the same price for the next one thank you very much dr ganovitz i think that we we come to to the end thank you all for attending uh, we are very uh, happy to to see you during this uh, lecture thank you all and uh, thank you bye much. bye